Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. So recently a subscriber of mine suggested that I show you guys how to make a drop down menu. Something similar to an HTML component for example. Now if we look at many of my other tutorials we've done some very interesting things with menu components. We've got the hover effect, we've got slider bars, we've got tilt effects, all kinds of cool things to make your menus pop out and stand out. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this. We have a menu bar, it says menu, it lights up when we hover over it, when we click it, bam, it's got a selection. And I can click on it to hide the selection. And if I click on one of these items, it's going to extract the value or the text from the item I click on and give it to the master menu element. Bam, just like that, item three, click it, item four, item one, item two, item three, item four. So basically the way this works is this menu item at the top has got an array. It can have any sort of properties in this array and ultimately all I'm doing is when we click it I'm creating instances of a menu item I'm giving that menu item some piece of information perhaps the information stored in that array and I'm putting it a few pixels below the previous one so this one's slightly lower than that one number three is lower than number two and number four is lower than number three pretty simple stuff and when we click on that it either shows or hides it if we click away it hides it that kind of cool stuff so when we do click on one of these menu items you don't exactly have to give the menu that value i mean you can assign it to any other global variable you can assign it to something strange it doesn't really matter so let's jump straight into the code i'm going to show you exactly how you can do this so this is our pretty much empty project i mean we've got a font we've got an empty room we've got a sprite that's pretty much just a box with two sub images one that is a hover and one that's not. And first things first, I'm going to create, let me just minimize those. I'm going to create something called object menu and it's going to have the menu sprite. Let's add a create event over here, drag in some code. So firstly, my list equals ds list create. Okay. Then here I'm going to say ds list add to which list? Well, my list course and what do we want to add values okay cool so here we can say item one here I can say item two item three and just to prove there's no funny magic I'm actually gonna create more items than my demo that I just showed you now had item four let's add an item five just like that. Next, because we've got sub images tied to the sprite that we've set for this object, I need to set the image speed to zero so it doesn't flicker between them. And then the default text is going to be menu. Doesn't really matter, you can call it whatever you want. Now, because I'm creating a DS list here, I need to destroy this DS list when the game ends. So let's not forget to do that. Other game end, drag in some code. DS list destroy. Remember, it's not delete, it's destroy my list. Cool. Next, let's create a draw event. Shove in some code. Now I want to draw self because remember, whenever you add a draw event here, it's going to override whatever's going on there. So draw self. Let's um, draw set color to C white. Let's uh, draw set font to FNT main, I think it was. There it is. Let's do our alignment. So horizontal alignment is going to be FA center. There we go. And draw set vertical alignment. That's FA middle. Next, draw text X, Y, so that's going to be the origin, string, text. Always wrap that in string just in case it changes to something else. Cool stuff. So that's going to draw whatever the text is. And on start, that's just going to say menu. Okay, next, what happens when we click on this menu? So that's going to be mouse. Now I'm going to use a global mouse left pressed event. And I'll show you why just in a second. So for this event, there are two tests we need to run. If position meeting, the mouse X and the mouse Y with self. Okay, so if the mouse is hovered over the menu when the person clicks, that's one case. 
else it isn't. So this is when we click somewhere else. So we click on the black space, for example. So if we're hovering on the mouse when we click, then if instance exists, object, menu, item. Okay, so if we have menu items visible, then, well, with all these menu items, we're going to destroy them. Pretty simple. So they go away. Else, if they don't exist, well, then we're going to create them. And to create them, we need a for loop. Var i equals zero. I is less than. Here we can use ds list. I think it's size of my list. And obviously increment i by one. Now, one thing is we want these menu items to be lower than the one before it. So let's create some variables here. We're going to call this, say, var y increment. And it's going to be sprite. Let's do a get height of, um, what is that called? Sprite menu. Cool. So that's going to get the height. If we go into this, that's going to be 110. So this value is going to be set to 110. Okay, so we need to increase the Y by 110 pixels, so that's where the next one goes. Okay, so I'm going to create a temporary variable called YY, and this is going to be the actual amount that we need to use. And YY is going to equal Y plus Y increment. And in this, when I was doing some testing, I noticed there was like a one or two pixel gap between each one, which was strange. So let's count for that with a minus two right over there. You might not need to do a minus two, depending on what your sprite looks like. Maybe it's different. Maybe your one works out just perfectly. Anyway, you just have to work out exactly what that increase in Y needs to be. Okay, so now we've got Y, Y. X is going to be the same. Remember, we're just going down. We are not moving against the X coordinate. So var item equals instance create. We're going to do it at X. We have Y, Y. And this is where we create object menu item. Now, I said var item because we need to give it some stuff. I need to say item.text equals ds list find value. Now, the thing about ds list find value is it takes an index, right? So we tell it what ds list to get stuff from. And here we can use the position, which we can use i for, just like that. So that's going to start with 0, and it's going to keep going until it gets to 4, which correlates to item 5, the text that said item 5. Then, last, we have to say yy plus equals the y increment minus 2. So it's just that bit at the end. Cool stuff. So now we've got to figure out what to do if the user clicks the button, but he's not meeting this object menu. So now we also need to take into account if the user is not clicking on the menu, but he's clicking on one of the menu items. So we want to make sure that nothing happens if the user is actually clicking on one of the menu items. And here we're going to say object menu item. So if you're not clicking on one of the menu items, well then we can do this piece of code again. Just destroy all the menu items if they exist. And that's pretty much all we need to do right over here. So let's go ahead and actually create that menu item. It's going to have a few similarities. For example, it's also going to have a text. It's going to set to blank. It needs an image speed of zero also. It's going to need a draw event that we can actually just steal right from here. There we go. And it, unlike the menu, only needs a left pressed event, not a global one. And this is going to say with object menu. So that is the big guy right at the top there. Let's set your text to that of other text. And other text, remember, other is the calling object, which is the menu item. So I'm setting object menus text to the text of this menu item over there which is created over here, and is actually passed through on the menu's left pressed event. There, that's where it's set. 
Cool. Then we can say, well, with all instances of object menu item, instance destroy. Just like that. So you click on a menu item, it's going to update the text of the menu, and then it's going to destroy all the instances of a menu item. Then you can disappear. Okay. Now one thing I want to do is add that hover effect, and to do that, oh, menu item needs to have that, sorry. To do that, I'm going to create a parent item here. Um, it doesn't need a sprite, it's going to have a step event that's pretty much just going to say if position meeting, uh, we're using a lot of position meeting, which is great. Mouse X, mouse Y, self, else, and then this is going to say image index equals one. Otherwise, image index equals zero. Okay, and let's go to both those objects we created earlier. And let's say their parents are the parent item. Good stuff. So that'll handle the hover effect. Let's go to our game world. Let's make this a little bigger. Maybe get rid of our grid, zoom out a bit. Objects, menu. Remember, we're not going to be creating instances of menu item ourselves. That's up to this big boy to do. Let's put it somewhere at the top. So we give it a click. It's going to drop those down over here. The user can do what he wants and it's going to destroy them. So, okay, save, and let's run this. So unlike the demo I showed you before we went through all this code, this menu has five items. The menu in the demo only had four. So if I click this, then it shows me five items. I know that things are working perfectly. So let's click menu, bam, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Depending on how many strings we have in that DS list, we're creating one menu item for each. And if I click over here in the black space, it goes away. Click here. Let's select menu item five. Bam. Destroys itself and all other instances of object menu item and gives the menu that text. Pretty simple stuff, guys. That was actually very interesting. How cool is that? So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you've got any other component suggestions, I'm pretty sure I can put them together. So send me a PM or put them right in the comments and we can actually see if we can make it happen. If you like this video as well as many of my other ones, I invite you to check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. If you like Killing Time, check out my mobile game on the Google Play Store as well as the Amazon App Store. You can also follow me on various social media networks. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, things like that. Links are all in the description project file for this video is also in the description. Play around with it. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.